Let's dive right into today's highly crucial video of a secret roundtable meeting on October 17th of this year. They're all in this together, and it's going to utterly blow your mind. This movie, on the other hand, will clearly demonstrate. Do you understand what I mean? Yesterday, we discussed Michael Barr, a former Ripple employee. Michael Barr, the advisor, will be in charge of the Federal Reserve. Continue reading to the end to find out more. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure to watch this new video right now. Hello and welcome to our channel, where we discuss the newest XRP news and the cryptocurrency world in general. If you are watching one of our videos for the first time, we would gladly offer you a special greeting. We encourage you to enable notifications so you never miss any video. We are pleased to announce that this channel is hosting a 200 XRP giveaway. To be eligible to participate, simply subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment with the hashtag XRP. The winner will be announced on October 31st. Deal, and then we talked about Ripple and the Module Foundation creating a more financially inclusive future, as well as how their CBDC platform will be providing access and inclusion broadly to banks, fintechs, members of the public. But folks, let me tell you to sit back and enjoy this one, because here we have Jerome Powell and Michael Barr sworn in July 19th of last year. And as you guys could see on the board members, we have the head Powell, we have Philip Jeffers. You must pay attention to what she is saying. Because it is critical to obtain her viewpoint since she and Michael Barr collaborate on. We have Michael Barr on the Committee for Financial Stability, and we have Michael Barr on the Committee for Supervision and Regulation, and we have Michael Barr and Bauman on the Committee for Payments, Clearing, and Settlement. So I'm telling you, this is tremendous, um, because as you can see, this is a video of the round table discussion. The 17th of October is to blame. This section promotes innovation, money, and payments by supporting a safe and efficient payment system and offering services that help us financially markets and private sector payments clearing and settlement arrangements. Okay, this is huge. I also want to be clear about what Michael Barr says here. Michael. It is critical that we do not create a regulatory climate that stifles innovation. Innovation, ah, uh, innovation, is vital to the financial industry, the American economy, and the world economy. One of the reasons for our incredibly active economic system is that we permit, encourage, and allow that kind of innovation, and then we need to let it grow within those guards. Rails in order to avoid becoming enslaved to outdated technology. We should welcome financial innovation as a constructive force that can enhance access and cut costs for individuals and businesses alike. On a more basic level, we should prioritize access to rapid, efficient digital payments. This is a problem of both efficiency and fairness. I've spent a large portion of my career focusing on issues of financial inclusion. As a public servant and an academic, we are seeing banks experiment with a variety of different models to issue dollar-denominated tokens on distributed ledger technologies. The proposals range from issuance of tokens on private controlled networks to facilitate payments within or among banks to proposals that explore issuance of freely circulating tokens on open permissionless networks. It is difficult to discuss payment innovation without mentioning the increased experimentation with new payments. Stable coins and central bank digital currencies are emerging in the private and public sectors in the United States and around the world. Stable coins, as I have stated in previous statements, require strict regulation, and as you have heard, Michael Bartlett. There are numerous instances in which it is stated that you cannot, should not, and must not cease innovation. When it comes to financial inclusion, Michelle Bauman was the author of this PDF. Keep in mind that she collaborates with you. With Jerome Powell, Michael Barr, and this is a huge issue, okay. Listen to what she says here, so an important issue for us to consider is whether a bed could provide the public with a more appealing alternative to cash in a world that may be shifting away from cash-based payments, and in investigating this question, we must also consider the privacy implications, and whether a CBC would be a better alternative than the private sector. Solutions if the Federal Reserve were to authorize and direct us to establish a CBC, we would have to think about it seriously. 
It is also worth investigating how an intermediate CBC with private sector service providers could be established in a way that retains financial institution involvement while minimizing disruptions to the financial system. Whether alternative policies, even those beyond the purview of the Federal Reserve and in the absence of a CPEC, would more effectively pursue financial inclusion, some of the risks I mentioned may still exist as the private sector continues to innovate, such as the risk of substitution from commercial bank deposits to digital wallets and the migration to less regulated digital assets, such as stable coins, you guys are about to be mind blown, okay. Policymakers have debated whether CBDCs could play a role in streamlining cross-border payments by introducing simplified distribution channels and creating additional opportunities for cross-jurisdictional collaboration and interoperability. And this is why David Schwartz says this, and this is why I've been saying XRP what they're trying to do is create a level playing field where every economy can connect and move value like it has it before. Before, and then we're leveling the playing field across all cryptos, we have the technology to allow every financial institution on the earth to settle with every other financial institution in a compatible jurisdiction in any asset in seconds for less than a dollar, consider the following. We're nowhere near that today, but imagine every financial institution settling with every other financial institution in seconds for less than a penny on any asset that's fundamentally transformative. We have the technology to do it now, we just need to figure out how. Customer due diligence and sanction screening to ensure compliance with Bank Secrecy Act regulations and standards. This is why RippleNet technology is so crucial, since different countries will have different legal systems and what they're trying to do with Ripple again. Fill in the blank is a level playing field for all of them so that they can compete. Okay, use this large system, and then this was issued on October 17th. Take note of this section as an example of a steady coin issuer. Today, we are often licensed or chartered at the state level as money service organizations, trust corporations, and in some situations, banks including the opportunity to keep money. However, while many of these issuers are subject to state oversight, they do not benefit from the full complement of prudential regulation applicable to banks, such as capital requirements and prudential monitoring from the back, pauses, and bank precautions, such as deposits. In times of hardship, insurance coverage and access to central bank funds are available. You've probably heard that banks favor deposits. Insurance coverage and access to central bank liquidity in times of crisis is very important, because, as you may recall, this video still needs to be played out, but consider where the U.S. will hit a cap. It's going to be at scale, so when I say we're processing $10 trillion every night, I mean USDC itself, which has handled over $3.5 trillion in transactions. And so, um, if we can, you know, improve it with more scalable blockchain technologies like you know Brad's company, uh, probably secure, we will. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That is really massive, because if you recall what I mentioned about these stable coins, they need clarity if they are to use the digitalized XRP. That's why Jerome Powell said that. The potentially rapid and widespread adoption of a global stable coin, potentially a global currency, is governed only by the incentives of a private company, only by the incentives for private companies, are something that will deserve and will receive the highest level of regulatory expectations, and here we have Dr. Powell, Mrs. Michelle Bauman, Michael, bar none. Does it make sense to collaborate now? It must have the highest level of clarity, which Ripple and XRP currently have, and keep in mind that in terms of financial stability, you know you have the best. The Federal Reserve basically prints money out of thin air, trillions and billions and trillions of dollars. Guess what XRP's escrow is going to help with financial stability? so they don't need to print all this money in the end. That is why they are printing at the end of the day. So much because they're going to reset the system, they're going to introduce a new system, and they're going to ditch the old system. So if you're going to be introducing a new financial infrastructure, do whatever the hell you want to print whatever you want on growing the debt, because at the end of the day, the bubble is going to burst, and a new system will be implemented with that being said, ladies. As well as gentlemen, I appreciate each and every one of you. Please let me know what you think. What do you think in the comments below? And keep in mind that escrow, 
we will go down this channel. Escrow will go down in history as being for financial stability, which is what every nation seeks. With that stated, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with another video. It has to have the highest level when we started creating ripples with the hypothesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to enable strong global payments, enormous sums of money ripple. The network was structured so that consumers who benefited from our fiat-based network may move to ODL once the market matured, which is exactly what happened. Flip the switch, yeah, I believe what we're developing is tackling a real problem. And I believe that all of the tokens are my advice. If there is actual utility and real value being supplied to a real consumer, everyone would understand the usefulness. The token will be valuable. 